We're going to switch gears just a little bit and shift from equations to inequalities. So this first lesson should be hopefully all a review for you on how to solve a linear inequality. So when we are graphing a linear inequality, the solution is all of the points that would satisfy the inequality. So obviously, because it's an inequality, there's not just one solution. So when we graph these, we would start by graphing what the equation would look like normally. So if I were normally going to graph y equals 2x minus 5, I would start at negative 5 and use my slope of 2 to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, as many times as I needed to. Now, from here, I have to pay very close attention to my inequality. So just as when I graphed, say, y is greater than 2 on a number line, and at 2, I would put an open circle and shade it to the right, I'm going to follow those same processes. So again, I'm going to use, instead of an open circle, I'm going to use a dotted line or a dashed line, and that shows that anything up to that line is a solution, but not the values that are directly on the line. So for instance, if I use the point 0, comma, negative 5 in this equation, 2 times 0 and then negative 5, I end up with negative 5 is greater than negative 5, which is false. But all of the stuff really, really close to that would make this equation true. So here I'm going to go ahead and then connect the dots. Connect the dots with a nice solid or dot, dotted or dashed line. Now from here, just like I did here and I looked for values that were greater than 2 and I shaded, I'm going to do the same process here, except I need to actually plug in a test point. So when I do this, you choose any point on the graph at all that's not already on the line. I prefer the point 0, 0, and I use it every time that 0, 0 is not located on my line. I'm going to plug that value in, so I'm going to plug in 0 for y. I'm going to plug in 0 for x. And I get 0 is greater than 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 5. So 0 is greater than negative 5. True or false? Well, 0 is actually greater than negative 5, so that's true. If I choose a test point and my solution is true, that means that everything on this side of the line is a solution. So you would shade whatever's on that side. If I were to have chosen a point that didn't work, that was not a solution, so say for instance I chose the point 7 comma 0, and let's see what happens. 0 in for y, 7 in for x, I get 0 is greater than 14 minus 5, which is 9. 0 is greater than 9 is false. And because it's false, I should not shade towards the test point, but shade away from the test point, which again would make me shade the left side of that equation, or the left side of that graph. Here are two more for you to try. And notice on both of these, I have just one variable. So this is a good review of how do you just graph with one variable, and then of course we should also graph dotted or solid line and shaded which direction. So for the first one, if I were graphing x equals 5, because there's just one variable, I know the graph looks like this, or it looks like this. So if it's an x equals equation, this is the x-axis, so this is an x equals equation. So x equals 5 would go through here and be a nice straight line. Now this is an inequality rather than an equal sign. Because there's no or equal to, this is a dotted or dashed line. Okay, and now I have to figure out which direction should I shade. Again, use a test point, in this case of 0, 0. I'll replace x with 0. I can't replace y with 0 because there is no y. But is 0 less than 5? Yes, it is, which means I shade on the side that contains 0, 0. Same thing's going to happen here, except it's a y equals. y axis, y equals. So y is greater than or equal to 4. My not line would look like this, and notice this time I do actually get to draw a solid line, and that's because of the or equal to. So if I were to graph this on 
say just a number line, it would be a filled in point shaded to the right. But since we are now, whoops, since we are now shading it on the two dimensional space, I go to my equation y equals four. Again, plug in a zero, zero is greater than or equal to four. False, it is not, so I should not shade towards zero, zero. I should shade the opposite direction of zero, zero. Here are a couple more for us to try together. Again, the first one is actually sort of in slope intercept form. So it's kind of like I'm graphing y equals four x plus zero. So now I have two variables. I will start at zero, use my slope of four to go up four over one as many times as I need to, or I could also go down four to the left one. This should be a dotted line because it's not or equal to. So a nice dotted line. And notice on this one, I can't use my favorite point of zero, zero because my line goes through zero, zero. So I have to choose any other point. Um, most people prefer to use like zero comma something. So I'm going to choose zero comma seven. So zero on the X, seven on the Y, which means I'm going to plug a seven in here. I'm going to plug the zero in here and I get seven is less than zero. True or false? Obviously seven is not less than zero, so don't shade towards that point, shade the opposite side. And then on my last one here, this is standard form, so I would use that cover up trick to find the points. Um, I would cover up the two X and that would give me negative Y equals four or Y equals negative four. I would cover up the negative y, that would give me 2x equals 4, so x equals 2. That's one way to graph it. Again, the other way is to rearrange it. I would have negative y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 4, and then y is you know less than or equal to 2x minus 4. And that would mean minus 4, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, etc. Now this one is an or equal to, which means instead of that dotted or dashed line, it's a nice solid line. I'm going to use my favorite test point here, which is zero, zero, and see what happens. So I get zero minus zero is greater than or equal to four. So zero is greater than or equal to four, which of course is false, which means don't shade towards zero, zero, shade the opposite side. Here are two questions for you to try on your own. So press pause, graph both of these inequalities, then press play to check your work. The first one, I purposely gave you one that was a little bit tricky because if I tried to use the cover up trick to graph this, I would just get the point zero, zero both times and then that's it, I wouldn't get a line. So instead on this one, I would probably subtract that two X over. I would get negative three Y is less than negative two X and then I would divide by negative three and dividing by a negative obviously flips my inequality. So I have Y is greater than two thirds X plus zero. So I'm going to go up two over three, up two over three. This one should be a nice dotted line. And then use any other point besides zero, zero, anything that's not on the line. So say zero comma seven again would be perfect. If I plug in zero for X, let's go ahead and plot that point zero seven. If I plug in zero for X, I get um, the seven for Y and the zero for X, I get seven is greater than zero, which is true, my friends. So seven is greater than zero means I'm going to shade towards my test point. If it's false, you shade away. I could have also plugged it into this original equation, which would be two times zero or zero minus three times seven is less than zero, which gives me negative 21 is less than zero, which is still true. For my second, I would use the cover up trick, cover up two X to get that Y is two, cover up five Y to get that X is five. That's the easiest way to graph. Use a nice, oops, straight line, pretend that went through both of my points and use my favorite test point of zero, zero to get two times zero, which is zero, plus five times zero, which is zero. So zero is greater than or equal to 10, not true. Shade on the opposite side of 
the point zero, zero.